Hello and welcome to this virtual band performance for beginners session. I'm Ryan Bradley and I've been making videos for brass bands and other ensembles all throughout lockdown. Um, it's pretty much all I've been doing since last March, so almost a year now. And I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get started for this. Now, this is for people that have never really gotten into it before, they've never tried anything. Um, so it's going to be pretty fast paced as there's so much to cover in a short amount of time. But hopefully you can get some good tips from this. So, first of all, you'll need some software. So I've written down some free ones and some paid ones. Um, the free ones are all on the left and the paid ones are on the right. So you've got, in terms of free DAWs, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation, this is what you'll need to edit the audio for your performances. You've got Reaper, which is amazing, although it's a 60 day free trial, I will say, and then it's very inexpensive from your 61st day of using it. Um, you've got GarageBand on Mac, which is great, that's free. Pro Tools First is really good as well. Mac and Windows, Cubase Light Edition, good as well on Windows and Mac. Um, paid wise, you've got Pro Tools, um, you've got Logic Pro, which is my personal choice. You've got Cubase, Persona Studio One, loads, pl plenty of different options. Um, in terms of free video editing software, probably the best one about is DaVinci Resolve. It's just incredible that it's free. I can't believe it's free still after using it for a while. And uh, iMovie is good, but I probably wouldn't recommend it if you're dealing with a large amount of people. It's just going to be very difficult to get everyone on the screen. And I actually don't think you can do many more than two or three people at the, sa at the same time. But still usable if it's all you've got. Paid-wise, you've got Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a sort of industry standard. Great, great software. You've got Final Cut Pro, which I personally prefer. I love it. I've been using it for years. Um, and now down the bottom I've got some optional software to create grids, so if you look at some of my videos um, I've got these grid lines in between the players and just to create these grids you could either use something like PowerPoint, which I'm sure everyone has, or you could um, go a step further and get Adobe Illustrator, which is great as well. Now, a lot of people don't cover this when they talk about this and it is choosing the right piece of music, um, so make sure if you're just starting out, start with a piece that's got a steady tempo and no rubato. Just going to make everything a whole lot easier for you when you're editing. Pauses and tempo changes can be difficult for players to play reliably when they're not playing in the same room and it can make the editing process harder. So, ways to create a guide track. What a guide track is, is a track that everyone plays along to listening on headphones and this ensures that everyone plays along to the exact same timing. Now, if people were just to play off their own internal metronome, there's no way everyone's going to play together. So the, the easiest way overall for a guide track is just to set a metronome mark that everyone plays to at home. Um, so this piece is 180 BPM and it's just a simple metronome. Let's play it. So you get the gist of that, just a metronome and tell everyone to come in after two bars. For this piece of music it's a pretty moderate tempo so two bars is fine. If it's a slow piece of music maybe one bar is okay. I tend to just go for two bars anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, another way to do it is export an audio from Sibelius. Um, so all you need to do is add an extra two bars before your piece of music starts and make them empty bars, just bars rest, and make sure the metronome's on and that'll give you that nice two bar count in. Um, then just email it out to your band and give them instructions. In terms of the instructions for recording, um, here are some guidelines here, feel free to screenshot that if you want. As I say here, there's two devices required, one to play the guide track with headphones and one to record a video. Now always get them to record in landscape, I can't stress it enough how much better it is when you're working with landscape videos. Avoid using laptops and webcams, they're just not great quality, especially laptop microphones, they can distort quite a lot which you don't want. And if people have access to professional microphones it will make your editing job a lot easier. Always test the recording device before you record as well. Um, maybe just get your players to send you an audio sample, video sample, um, and just check it over. Make sure there's no distortion, etc., and see if you can fix anything. Um, now, you can't see the end of that, but it says receiving files and file management. Um, I tend to get my files sent to me in WeTransfer. It just ma makes sure I don't lose any quality. It doesn't compress the videos down. Um, Dropbox and Google Drive are very similar. I've seen people using WhatsApp and Facebook, I wouldn't do that, it just compresses the audio and the video hundreds of times smaller and it's going to make it sound and look not as good. Always name your files the same way, i.e. Solocon at 1, Solocon at 2, instead of Principal Solocon at, and 
maybe a second silicon or bumper up. Just make sure your file systems are all the same. And lastly, stay organized. That's the most important thing. So um, that's just a quick brief of what we're going to do here. And now we're going to jump straight into Reaper, which is the software I'm going to be showing you through today. Okay, so that's us just opened up Reaper. Um, this is the first thing you'll see when you open it up. So you've got just a black project, there's nothing in it. You've got your timeline up the top, which is where you're going to place your audio files. And you can see the grid. So you've got bar 1, beat 1. So it's 1.1, 2.1, one, one. so bar 2, beat 1. And the individual little lines in between are the next beats in the bar. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4. And if I just turn on my metronome with this button up here so it goes green, you could be able to hear the metronome with on those beats. Now before we get started, we need to change a few project settings. So go up to File and Project Settings. We're going to make sure our sample rate is 44.1 kHz or 44,100 Hz. Now, what that is, is sample rate. You don't have to worry about it too much. All you need to know is that 44.1, or that number there, is the standard for audio and it's just going to make your editing process the easiest in, in the DAW you're working in. It's CD standard quality. Now, our BPM for this song, as I said earlier on, is 180, so project BPM, 180, and time signature is already 44, just 4 beats in the bar. So we can press OK to that. Now we should have the correct tempo. That looks good to me, and sounds good. So, now I'm going to go into my finder, and I'm going to go to this folder here, Hawaii 5 Ohm Media. Now this is where I've got all the videos from my band that sent to me. And I've also got another media folder, which we'll get to later on. So let's just grab here, select, and drag in. And all you're going to do is drop them there. So after you've dragged in all your videos, it's going to automatically take out all the audio from your video files. Now if you just press Command M on your keyboard, it's going to get rid of that mixer. And all the mixer is, is all the volume faders and the controllers to change certain parameters that we'll get to later. So Command M will get rid of that. And it's quite hard to take everything in right now because it's there's so many audio files. So if you use this minus arrow down in the bottom right, you can just zoom everything out till you can see every single instrument. Now if I was to play this right now, it's going to sound pretty awful because nothing's lined up and it's all too loud. So let's take a listen. <laughs> So not great. So we've got a lot of work to do. So the first thing I like to do is organise my tracks and put them into score order. Right now they're in alphabetical order, which is no use to us. So let's grab our soprano, and drag him up to the top. Let's take our solo con at one, drag up to the top. Solo con at two is next. Solo con at three is next. Now this is something that will take a while, so I'm just going to move on until I've done all that. And it's going to look something like this. So we've got soprano, trumpet solo, solo con at one, solo con at two, solo con at three, all the way down to drum kit. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get everything lined up. Now, let's start with the drum kit because the drum kit's the first thing that comes in. So I'm going to press this S, which is going to solo the drums. And press return, will take me back to the start. So let's open up, zoom in by pressing the plus icon down in the bottom right and get a wee zoom in to see what we're dealing with. Now I know this drum part starts right in the bar line so the next available bar after bar 1 is bar 2 so bar 1 of the piece is going to be bar 2 of this project just so I've got space before it starts and I'll zoom in and line up that first beat with bar 2. You can see this little line here that is the very start of bar 2, 2.1, as I spoke about earlier. You just want to line it up. That looks good to me. I'm going to turn on my click up here, my metronome, and listen to see if it's in time. That sounds good to me. So, next instruments that come in are the cornets. So, I can scroll right back up to the top. And I'm just going to keep my drum kit soloed, so I'll press solo the drum kit and keep my click on for now and solo the soprano. So I know that he comes in on the 
I think it's the third beat of the second beat of bar three. Yeah. That's right. Second beat of bar three is where it comes in. And I've done a pretty good job there just guess guessing without zooming in, so that looks good to me. And more importantly, does it sound good? It sounds in time to me. We'll skip the trumpet solo for now because that's later on in the piece, but you would just drag it to wherever it is and line it up by eye in ear. So look on, it's going to look pretty similar oh. to the soprano. Just drag it there. Good. I'm going to just do one more before moving on to save some time. Sounds good to me. So after you've done all that, um, I'm just going to move on to the next project, which has been done in. You can see that everything looks a lot more like it's meant to be one piece of music now, so all this stops, like this part. You can see it all together, lined up. So now from the start, we're sounding like this. So, sounding good, um, more aligned, but it's still not sounding great. So, next thing we need to do is start organising our tracks even more. So I'm going to press Command T on my keyboard. And that's going to create a new track, and I'm just going to drag it right to the top. I'm going to call this Cornets, or abbreviated like that. Now, what this is going to be is a bus. In audio world, the bus is a pipeline of audio that you can route anything to. So you can route any of these audio tracks into another audio track to create summon mixes of different instruments. And in a brass band's case, I want to do that because I want to be able to treat my sections differently. So I'm going to press the soprano. My last cornet, which is third cornet three, I'm going to press shift, select all, and I'm going to drag up and put that in that folder. And that has automatically set the output of these tracks to the input of that track. So when I solo just a cornet track, all I can hear is cornets. So just cornets right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the tracks so I'm gonna go on the flugel command T drag it above press the flugel again press shift second horn and drag them all into that like that I'm gonna call that horns that's not how you spell horns and <laughs> um, again command T call use and berries make sure it's above them Press first Barry, press second youth with shift, drag up, and it's part of this folder that we can just solo. So, I'm going to skip ahead because that takes a while, and it's all going to look like this. Still going to sound exactly the same because we've not changed anything yet. <laughs> Now the next stage is gain staging. What gain staging is, is making sure that you're not too loud at any point in the signal chain. So if at any point you're going to distort, it's not going to sound good. This is when we're going to open up our mixer, Command M. Now if you just have a look at all these red bits, this means we're distorted. And we really don't want that. So I'm going to select the cornets, just that channel there. Scroll all the way to the end, press shift on the drum kit and bring all my volume faders down and just see how that sounds and looks. It's a lot quieter obviously. I'm going to turn it up on your end so you can hear more of it. But me turning it up there in the video recording software has not changed anything in the audio software here. so. That does look okay to me. I'm just going to press all these red bits to get rid of it. And this will make sure that I can see if they go red again to see if they're clipping or distorting. Let's see. Everything's green to me, so that looks good. Next stage is panning. Now, panning is really important. Um, what panning is, is choosing if something is on your left side or your right side. Um, so obviously in a brass band, if you're the conductor, the soprano's on your left and the solo trombone's on your right. So I'm just going to pretend I'm the conductor and I want this little wheel to point towards where I think the player would be. So the soprano is going to be pretty far around to the left. 
trumpet solo for this piece of music I want bang in the middle just because the trumpet soloist would come out to the middle of the stage solo con at one is pretty close to where the soprano would be and solo con at two isn't as quite as close as that we're getting a bit more, more centered as we go through the cornets now back to the back row the rep's not going as far as the soprano but almost as far second cornets to third cornets we start straightening out and getting closer to the middle so you can see as I get closer this one is pretty close to the middle because the third cornet is kind of off in that direction instead of all the way round to the left so again I'm just going to go through everything and point the pan wheel to where I think it would be if I was the conductor so after you've got everything panned to where you want it um, you're going to want to create a rough balance so let's solo just the cornets And take away some instruments and boost some other instruments and try and get a good balance of what you would think it would sound like in an actual band room. So this is subjective and uh, it just takes a while to go through and get the balance right. So let's skip ahead until where we're all balanced. So everything's been panned, everything's had a kind of rough balance into it. Let's see how we're sounding. So that's sounding good. Uh, we've just got a few more things I would want to do to this before it's ready. So the first most important thing is EQ or equalization. What this is, is changing the gain or the volume of frequencies, certain different frequencies to try and either take away bad things or boost good things. So let's start with, let's say the solo euphonium. Let's just press the solo button so it's just him that's playing. So it's a good sound, but it's a bit dark I think and it could do with a bit, just a bit more air on top of it and maybe clean up some of the low end. So if you go to the effects here, it'll, if you hover your mouse it says effects just press and let's get the built in Reaper EQ, which is called RE EQ. There it is. Add. Now, the up here are higher frequencies, down here are lower frequencies. You don't need to know too much about it, but if you, you'll kind of get an idea of what you're going to do to it. You want to use your ear and just be creative and get it the way you want it to sound. <laughs> Sounds good to me, just a wee bit of air on top of the sound. Now it's a bit muddy in the low end, so I'm going to cut some low end out to maybe make some space for the tubas and um, trombones to come through. That sounds good. So that's subtractive EQ and that is additive EQ. Um, very useful things. So I'm just going to grab one more band and I'm going to maybe clean up some low mids. It's a bit honky there, I don't really like that frequency, so I'm just going to pull it out and I'm going to make the bandwidth not as big, so that's high bandwidth, which means it's affecting a lot of frequencies around that point, and lower bandwidth is just affecting that frequency on its own. About there. So that's cleaned it right up for me, I think that's worked. So let's move on to something even lower. Let's go to the B flat bass. Let's grab the EQ, or E EQ. Let's boost some low end to get some fatness out of the sound. That sounds good to me. And also on basses, I like to boost a wee bit of high end, high mids, to try and get them to bite through. That sounds good to me. Let's try one more thing. Let's go to the. Let's go to the trombone section. So we've just we've just EQ'd two instruments. What if you want to EQ a whole section? So let's we grab an EQ on the the section folder for or the section bus for the trombones. And make sure the bus is soloed. 
drums. So let's break them up. Maybe some low end, low mids for a bit more body. And cut some really low end just because we don't want it getting in the way of the basses. You want to make space in the mix for different instruments, so try and take out frequencies that other instruments need to occupy. That sounds a lot cleaner to me. So I'm going to go through and EQ everything, and it obviously takes a while, so let's skip on to where it's been done. So I've went through and I've added EQ to almost every track. Not every track, because some tracks sounded good on their own and I didn't think they needed EQ. So it's just important to use your ears and be creative. So now we're sounding a lot better. Now there's just one final touch we need to add to bring it to life and get ready to make the video, and that is reverb. So let's go on the master fader here and just the effects on the master. Let's grab the reverb and this one is good, RE Verbate, which is the Reaper's built in reverb. And I'm just going to play it and see how that sounds. And you have to make sure down here that that's red right now, you need to make sure it's not red. Press, press the on button to bring on the effects. Now I'm just going to bring the dry route down so I can hear just the wet signal, which is just reverb. I want this room to be a bit bigger than that. Now what a low pass does is, you would think it's got something to do with the low end, but it actually cuts out the high end because it's letting the lows pass through. Is that's going to darken the sound, and I don't like really bright reverb, so let's darken that reverb. See the difference? Sounds good to me. Now I'm going to bring down the wet, bring the dry back up to full volume and blend in the wet until it sounds good to my ears. That's sounding good to me. So after you've done that, you just need to export it. All you need to do is drag from the end of your files right to the starting point. And now that this is going to be quite important later on. You need to make sure that every time you e export from Reaper, every time you export from Reaper, you need to make sure you always export from the same place, which is the very start, which is bar one. And that just makes sure that your video and audio always stay in sync. So again, drag from the end of your file to the very start of bar one. Go to File, Render. Now we've been working in 44.1 hertz, um, kilohertz, sorry, which is 44,100 hertz, um, which has been great for audio. But now that we're switching over to video, it's really important to render this as a 48 kilohertz file or 48,000 hertz. This is because the standard for video editing is 48 kilohertz and the standard for DVDs, videos, just everything to do with film has always been 48 kilohertz. And it's going to make the edit a lot easier in DaVinci Resolve or whatever you're using if you use 48 kilohertz. So you've got to make sure that's done there. Um, it's stereo, that's all fine. You need to leave everything the way it is. Um, just choose where you're going to save it. Browse for directory. Um, and I'm going to save it in that Hawaii Five-O folder. And it's going to be in other media I'm going to save it, okay? So I have videos and other media. And I can just save it as Hawaii Five-O Final Mix. Um, so Hawaii 5 Final Mix and then you just press apply and render one file. Now after you've rendered that, I'm not going to do it because I've already done it, it's time to go into our next piece of software. So the next piece of software we're going to use is in my case PowerPoint or it could be Adobe Illustrator. Um, what I'm going to do is just delete everything I don't need and make sure in my design that the slide, sla slide size is 16 by 9, which is the standard video resolution that we're going to use. Now, we're going to go to Insert, and you're going to go Table. 
I've got 25 videos in this video, so 25 individual people. So the easiest way to figure this out is five by five. So five by five table, press OK, and stretch it out until it snaps into the edges there. It's gonna, you'll, you'll see it snap. So after it's snapped into place, it's gonna be the right size. You're gonna go to this arrow in the design tab, table design, and I'll, I'll just choose this bottom left one as it's just simple lines. Now you could leave it like this as a guide, or you could actually fatten up those lines to make it more of a feature in your video, which I like to do. So I tend to go for four and a half point, and my pen colour can be anything. This is gonna what you're gonna choose as your grid line colour. I'm gonna go for black today, and you're just gonna colour in the lines like so. There might be a faster way to do this, but I actually quite enjoy just going through and clicking every line, making sure to get the outer ones as well. After you've done that, um you're going to export it as a file into your Hawaii Five-O media or your piece media and other media, okay? And you're going to save it as 5x5, five five, which looks like that. Now to do that, all you have to do is right click, save as picture, make sure it's a PNG when you save it, so you get a transparent background. Save it in the other media as 5x5, five five, which I've already done. So now that you've created that, that's really fast part, we can jump straight into DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing you see when you get into DaVinci Resolve is this. I'm going to create a new project, okay? I'm going to call it Hawaii 5 -O. So once our first project that we've created is loaded up, you can see it's quite daunting at first, this piece of software. But let's just focus on these windows down the bottom. We're going to spend almost all of our time in this one here, Edit. Now in Edit, you've got your timeline here which you can scroll through very like uh, Reaper. You've got your media pool, which is where you put all your files. We'll get to that in a minute. And you've got your viewing window here, which is where you're going to see the actual video. Up here, you've got your inspector, or you can change it to other things, but I have it on inspector. And it means you can change certain parameters to videos and audio. We're also going to spend a bit of time in Fairlight, which is the audio editor. And we're going to use that for our syncing up of videos. So just like Reaper, we need to change some project settings. So file and project settings. Um, we're going to be in 1080p HD. I'm going to change mine to 30 frames per second because that is the kind of standard for phones these days. They all film in 30 frames. It just makes things simpler for us. Um, other things we need to choose are our optimized media and render cache. Um, you don't need to know much about what it is. Just copy these settings. Um, but in short, Proxy media is uh, going to make your process a lot faster because it's going to encode all your videos down to a much easier format for the computer to read and it's not going to have to decode all your compressed videos that's been sent through Google Drive or WeTransfer. So just use those settings, that they, they work for me and it's going to make your processing a lot faster. Last thing is in Fairlight, choose uh, audio sample rate is 48,000 as I've spoke about previously. Press save. So after my project settings are saved, I can start editing my video. So let's go in our edit window and let's go into that folder called Hawaii Five O Media. So here I'm going to highlight two of them and drag them to the left hand column here. Not the right hand column, the left hand column. Reason for that is now we have two separate folders that we can access. First thing I'm going to do is select all of these by pressing Command A or clicking and dragging, but I prefer Command A. I'm going to right click and generate proxy media. Um, I'm not going to do it because it takes ages and I've already done it. It's going to create a smaller and more manageable file for the computer to handle playing back. So after you've created your proxy media, what you need to do is drag in your first video. In our case, it'll be the soprano. So let's just drag a soprano like that. And it's going to go to automatically to audio one and video one. Now we're going to right click and go add tracks. And we're going to add another 25, just double click and 25 audio and video tracks. And I'll explain that soon. Now you can go through and see all your tracks like so. Video on top and audio on bottom. So let's grab our second video, solo con at one and trumpet solo. It's going to go in video two and it will automatically be assigned to audio two. Let's find our second solo con at. 
and that's gonna go there. It'll be a rep next. And then drag your next one on and your next one and your next one until you've got the full band up to video 25. And you should have an extra one left over called video and audio 26, which we'll get to soon. Okay, so after you've brought everything onto the timeline, you should now have 25 video and audio tracks filled and you should have one spare. Now what those spares are for, are for audio track that we mixed in Reaper and our grids that we made in PowerPoint. So on video 26, let's go grab in the other media folder, the 5x5 grid and just drag it into there, like so. Make sure it's on video 26, we don't need 27. Video 26, that's us. Okay, zoom right out and grab the end of this to drag it to the very end. And now you can see it's created this grid over the whole thing. Now it's not quite lined up with the edges here, so I'm just going to go up. You can actually see that, um, which I can fix. So I'm going to go up here and change the zoom to 0 0.01. And that is fixed it. That is the number that works for me. And that's filled the full frame. Okay, so after you've got your grid looking good, let's go scroll down to audio 26 and grab our mix that we made in Reaper. And drag it right to the very start of the project on audio 26. Now, now's a good time to probably turn on your proxy mode, your proxy playback. So timeline proxy mode, quarter resolution, it's just going to make your computer run a bit faster and not get tripped up by the processing. So now we need to go into Fairlight Editor. Fairlight is DaVinci Resolve's audio suite and it's really good for looking at audio files and lining things up. And all these audio files are linked to the video files so whatever you move here is going to move in the edit window as well. So that's just solo audio 26 which is our final mix. <laughs> So we can confirm that that sounds good. Now let's go line up from score order, the soprano, and just go down. So you can move them, slide back and forth like this. You can grab the start and end points, just like that. And what I'm going to do is go find where he needs to play by soloing him. And I've soloed the soprano and audio 26. Let's see. So it's way before that. Let's zoom in a bit. Probably around here. And you just want to slide it until it sounds right. Sounds good to me. Audio 2, which is our clarinet solo. And it's going to again look very similar to that, so you can see that they're kind of lining up. Just do it by eye and play it. Just one more for demonstration purposes and we'll move on. There you go. So all you need to do is do the same for every single file and I'll come back in a minute where that's done. Okay, so I've just went and aligned everything up and you can see that much like it was in Reaper, everything is looking a lot more like it's one thing now. So that all the waveforms are lining up. Let's go back to our edit window and you can see that everything has moved. So let's just... Let's just view the audio down here. All the audio has moved, which has also moved our videos. Right, next thing to start doing is changing the size of our videos. So you're going to press the first one, which is Soprano. You're going to scroll up, press Shift, Hold Shift, and press Drums, which is the very last one, making sure not to press the 5x5 grid. Now I'm going to have to change where I'm on screen again so we can see what I'm doing. So after you've selected all these, you should go up here to the Video Inspector, and you need to go to the Zoom. And because we need five rows of five here, um, each video needs to be five times smaller. One divided by five is 0 0.2, which gives us our zoom. So 0 0.2 zooms all the videos out to the right size. So now you can scroll down to the very first one, deselect all by pressing over here somewhere, anywhere. Let's highlight the SOP or Soprano and press the Transform Tool button here. Now you can zoom in a bit. Now would be a good time to turn the playback mode back to not, um, just to normal, or off, so you can see everything a bit higher resolution. You're going to drag this middle circle, and the soprano will follow, 
and you're just going to drag it until it's nice and lined up with our lines. That looks good to me. Go down and select the next one, so look on it one. Drag up. And because we've got quite thick borders, you don't have to be terribly accurate doing this because the, the borders are going to cover up your ragged edges. <laughs> It one more for example because this thing does take a while you're just going to go through and line everything up and I'm just doing it in school order as I've done everything okay so I'm going to come back in a minute where everything has been done so after you've got everything lined up like that and everything aligned you've now created your first scene now I'm only going to create one scene in this video and um, but you could go on and create other scenes but to save each scene you need to create a new timeline so what you need to do is press Command N on your keyboard and it's going to say New Timeline. There we go. And we're going to call it Master. And because this is going to be the very, the very final timeline of our project. Now each timeline can be a different scene. So I've created my timeline 1 there was uh, just a scene of 25 people. I could have timeline 2 as maybe a scene of 4 people on a different grid. It's all, all up to yourself and being creative. So on our Master scene we need to drag in our first scene, which is timeline one. And in this case, it's our only scene. So you've dragged in this timeline or scene. And what you're going to do first is unlink these audio and video clips because we need to replace the audio. So delete that audio. And remember when I said you always want to render out from Reaper from the certain point, from the very first bar every time. That's so that every time you create a new mix or if you've changed something, you can just drag it in under the timeline and it's already going to perfectly line up. So that's us got one scene in the timeline. Let's relink our clips so nothing moves. Um, so you could grab another scene that you've made and drag it in and cut between them um, just by using B. So if you press B on your keyboard you bring up the blade tool and you can cut between certain scenes like so. But of course I'm not going to do that because I've only got one scene today. But what I am going to do is cut the eight, the first part of the project off because I don't need the very start. They're just a few minutes, a few seconds of silence. So do that, and press delete. Then if you press A, you go back to your normal cursor, drag it back to the very start. Now scroll along to the very end of your project. Grab this, and it's faster. And just go a few seconds after the very last note. Press B again, and cut and then delete the second part by pressing, you can get rid of your B tool by pressing A, go back to your normal cursor, select that, delete. Now if we zoom out, everything we've done is now only on two, two tracks, two lines, and we're pretty much finished. So we need to now deliver or, fin or render our project. So go down to the deliver window, and it will just take a second to load up, there we are, and I'm gonna call it Hawaii Five-O. And then you would browse where you want to save it. And I'm going to render this as a QuickTime movie in H.264. If you're on Windows, you might want to go for MP4. Or even if you're on Mac, you go for MP4. But I just go for a QuickTime movie as it works best for Mac. And I'll always stick with H.264. It's just the best codec to get your file size nice and small. But the, the quality is still really good. Then you go Add to Render Queue. And the very last thing we need to do today is press Render All. Which I'm not going to do because it's already done. So this is where it would spit it out. But you go render all and it would come out into this folder called Y50 and now I'll just show you the final product. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the full thing because it would take a while but uh, hopefully that has been a good session and it can get you to grips with starting. It was a lot of information to take in I know but if you watch it through again, pause it where you need to pause it. Hopefully it was clear enough and you can be as creative as possible and make the best videos you can. So thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.